Hello and welcome to Camera Central Podcast. Today I have Fez, what's your last name? Mia. Fez Mia, and uh, we're going to be talking about some cool stuff, I'm guessing. Yeah. So, introduce yourself, what do you do? So, yeah, my name is Fez, I am a filmmaker based in Newport, South Wales, not too far from here where we are, and I help steer a youth arts and advocacy charity called Urban Circle Newport, which has done media and arts development for the last 17 years. Oh, amazing. So what does that charity focus on in particular? So the term arts and advocacy suggests that we, we use arts to encourage advocacy and we use advocacy to encourage better art. Okay. So actually it's, it's people telling their own stories and communicating the things they need to communicate and the ways they want to communicate it. So it's got a very youth work led. Yeah. So that sounds that sounds really quite interesting, especially in a community like Newport, which is kind of renowned for being yeah, so a creative as, as, environment. As, yeah, as an arts agency, we, we're quite... I mean, that sounds like I'm about to blow my own trumpet here, but yeah, we're quite progressive the way we use youth work in engaging young people. I'm on a few awards doing the kind of work we do. Uh, that's to blow my trumpet there. Yeah, yeah, yeah a little thing. bit, a little yeah, bit. No, <laughs> no, no, no. By all means, blow your trumpet. I mean, it's part of the reason why you're on today. You we, know, I mean, we're on another level. We've we just do. been confirmed for portfolio funding from Arts Council of Wales. We're funded for the next three years to oh, amazing. campaign and do more work in this realm and uh, engage more young people in this type of uh, arts development. Um, yeah, and filmmaking is a big part of that. Fair enough. So what do you shoot with in general when it comes to your filmmaking? I think, well, we're between Blackmagic Cine cameras yeah. and iPhones. Really? So yeah. you use iPhones more and more. Is that because of the youth work, like, lead kind of aspect of it? I think, I think well, most things have gone, you know, mobile, making, rapid producing, directing, you know, Ad hoc material is just become very common with content yeah. producing, um, and you know the the pocket cinema camera isn't pocket. Yeah, you know it's just the way it is. Uh, so it's yeah. good for making great films, but actually sometimes you just make something super super quick. Yeah, and get it online quick. That's. I do like the black magics and you know we could probably talk a little bit about the full frame as well because it's something I do want to try out. However, um I think I was in Utah at the time and I tried out one of the older black magics there and it's so big that it's not really what I want out of a cinema camera. I think it's one of those things where, like, it would hinder the kind of thing. So with with me recently, and, you know, we were talking a little bit about the FX3, um, it comes down to kind of, like, what suits you in any given situation. So, like, you shoot with the iPhone or, you know, um, you shoot for cinema. So I recently had an FX6 and then moved to an FX3. It's one of those things where it's, like, user experience, I think, is hugely useful when it comes to choosing a camera but also kind of like what's going to be good for that situation i don't know if that i, I mean i'm influence. going to paraphrase the thing and leave of it says the best camera you'll ever have is the one you'll have on you yeah, yeah yeah and i think in the instances and situations you're in well that's the camera like yeah and the pocket is massive it's massive it's <laughs> it, they really it's should pocket. rename that to it's something a lot smaller there's no pocket to fit in uh but Actually, I still think it's small for the kind of output you get. The output yeah. is absolutely obscene. Blackmagic yeah. Raw is an amazing file format. Uh, the best file format I've used, actually. And yeah. I've used every type of manufacturer. I've only used it once. Yeah. But what's been interesting is that they've actually started introducing it into other camera brands as well. Like Nikon, I think, have got their own uh version of b-raw okay. and it's like progress right so yeah. um uh, more, apple's more been going a bit further yeah, a bit more latitude progress, yeah, yeah, yeah 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 it's it's better than progress yeah, yeah. and uh you know the file compression is done better <laughs> as well file but, size is about um, four times the size as well <laughs> yeah no who <laughs> is it actually maybe not four but yeah it's definitely i thought they, they they brought it down uh no progress is still smaller it's it's definitely okay. smaller progress is definitely smaller yeah definitely oh fair smaller. enough um, but other like Lumix has started using it as well um, okay. in their cameras, which is nice. pretty cool. Nice, um, nice. It'd be interesting to see it come into other variants and stuff. I think it's a matter of time, isn't it? When you think about what Black Magic are doing, they're open source. I think I like the culture of the company. Yeah, and they're they're open to using other different types of software and codecs and wrappers yeah. and and actually their background is in broadcast so actually beyond cameras it's it can be used in everywhere else so actually yeah big up black magic i mean da vinci and black magic all day i, I believe it's anyone wants to know sponsor face with some uh, black magic cameras yeah yeah if anyone wants to sponsor <laughs> you know guys we're, go, out, here. Go ahead. we're out here 
Oh, fair enough. Um, but I, I, I do find what Black Magic are doing in the in the industry quite interesting in general. To be fair, because slowly and surely more and more people are switching over to Da Vinci, and like that's maybe because of Black Magic Raw, you know, and they put all the, like you know the card that we got was actually out of a Black Magic camera, right? So, like they're making people to go over, and because it, it's so much cheaper. Re I'll, realistically than actually using premiere i mean you can use it for free and it's pretty good damn good isn't it i mean i've been paying for different professional software for the last 10 plus years uh yeah. probably cumulatively spent thousands <laughs> uh and i think you get to a point you realize actually you just want sturdy tools and a lot of software gives you bells and whistles and stuff that, you know, sometimes it sounds great, but you just don't use it. Mm. And DaVinci for me is like, that's a solid tool. It's a really strong piece of software. Um, and you're not paying out your teeth to the Adobe yeah. Mafia, as has been known. Yeah, I, know. <laughs> I think the one thing that I, I, I've realized, because, you know, I, I did say that I've changed over now. Yeah. I press the all forgiven like I'm getting yeah. rid of the entire yeah. thing because yeah. if I if I just get rid of the ability for me to be able to use Adobe that means I can't just like chicken out and yeah. then yeah. use Premiere because yeah. yeah, yeah. I know it so well um, the so, learning curve between Premiere and DaVinci isn't too huge it's not that massive mm. like the thing I found difficult about it when I first started was the interface was entirely different I mean, you pick it up fairly quick though. Yes. Yeah, just have to I, th I, I wish you find it. Yeah, I think it was one of those like I wish I put more effort into just learning it because mm -hmm. it works with you so nicely, and I like it a I've lot. Got, I had this just feeling it's designed by editors. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and I and I think that could goes down to like a very root level because um, have you edited on Premiere before? Oh yeah, seen? I mean that was seven years. I would say the effect library in Premiere is. A little bit stale and kind of like stagnant for me yeah. compared to what you get out of DaVinci. I mean, they've just got like a decent amount of effects that work with you. Mm. Um, useful effects. Useful yeah, effects. That's the difference that's, having yeah, effects. Yeah. Just, like, I'm never going to use Page Peel. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, but it's, it's like, yeah, page, <laughs> like Page Peel. I mean, it feels like it was like a little bit out of like Star yeah. Wars or something mm, like yeah, that. Do you get what I mean? It, that's it. <laughs> but I mean, I find, yeah, I, as a piece of software, I, it's. I also find actually what I've realized recently da vinci are making updates faster yeah and i'm not sure if there's them encroaching and trying to bid into that market quickly yeah but that's it for for people that are working in the industry working on project projects of different scales that's what you want you want a company that's got your back that's going to update software regularly yeah so my final cut went down the pan quickly for a lot of people yeah. except for, i know some people use it but um yeah, DaVinci's updates are constant. It's good. I, it's, it's good. It's good. Uh, I haven't had any crashes so far, uh, which is good. In Premiere, I have it on a daily basis. Um, I feel like I'm... I'm, I'm, I'm like, I like Adobe, <laughs> right. um, but like I, I do stupid things in Premiere, though. Yeah. Like, I, like, I properly push it sometimes. A, uh, like putting a, a warp stabilizer on speed ramp. Yeah, how do you find it now with the new Mac? It's, oh, it's good. It's just got the new M2 Mac. Yeah. So let me get your work your workflows. FX three converted to ProRes. No, I'm not converting to ProRes. Try convincing him. He's having none of it. If you're gonna go, just go. Like, just put ProRes through your M2, and you'll see the difference. Is it, is it that much it's, better? Is it's it? like butter, like it's because of the ProRes processor inside the, yeah. the M1 and the M2. I've got the M1 Pro. Um, it's ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous. And like, why have they not done this years ago? It was built, <laughs> but it was, it was, it was built for to have a dedicated processor for yeah, that file format it? makes a huge difference to okay. the load the computer takes. I'll give it a go. I haven't, I don't touch ProRes purely because of the I, file size. I'm looking for efficient. I know it's like more efficient to edit in ProRes. It's just having the original files. I tend to prefer a lot smaller and easier to store. It depends on your workflow, obviously. Yeah. You know, and you've got to, you've got to operate within the means you have. Yeah, yeah. Right? Uh, but as soon as I start doing large projects, I'm talking like, you know, 500 gigabyte projects. Yeah. I just convert, spend an hour, convert it, and just everything was smooth. And I okay. felt like I was editing 720 files. It was <laughs> really? Is that good? Just is moving it? around. I, like, that. I, have, I have used ProRes before when it comes to um, using a Ninja with it and then, you know, okay. um, 
and it was a way for my old iMac Pro to actually like run things more efficiently because that was the biggest thing when I had it. But with this, it, it flies pretty much most times. Again, but I do need to. I need to use Pro. I, I would suggest maybe test it on a project that's going to be challenging okay. that you know is going to be challenging with the file format you got. Yeah, and just okay. see how ProRes will. I have to give it. it I've done a multi-track six camera, two and a half hour show. Okay. And. Just breezed, buzzed, buzzed breezed. There was like because that's the next everything. thing is actually uh, multicam on DaVinci. I'm too used to it on Premiere, so I need to see what it's like. It's better in DaVinci. Is it? Hundred percent. Okay. Hundred percent. It's gonna be interesting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> go ProRes. There, go ProRes, and you'll see it. Yeah. Yeah. Switching between cameras in ProRes is just like no issues, no lag. There's no it's lag. Just These are wrapper formats. They're designed for kind of distribution and uploading and that kind of stuff. They're not. Yeah. They're not tuned for editing you, when you edit you need bit depth you need codecs that are designed to be cut um okay. and h264.5 is not designed for that and it's okay. going to burden your processor heavy and if you've got an m1 m2 yeah so i did plug apple here but uh yeah they've they've built in yeah. an apple prores encoder inside the chip which means actually yeah, your imports are faster exports are faster you're moving around faster mm. adding uh color it's unbelievable. Yeah. 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 I have to give it a go. Uh, th this is the first time that I've actually really got into starting doing color grading because, like, before I'm probably going to cringe at this, I've been much more of a, like, a lot, put, uh, just put LUTs on and just. Oh, you're a drag and drop guy. Yeah, drag and drop. <laughs> but I want to get into color grading because it is important. I've always been it's focused exciting. on it's the method and yeah, kind yeah. of like how to tell stories mm, and, you know, all of this. Um, but it's going to be interesting. What we realize actually is when people. Are, have access to creativity they have they have more of a will to communicate the emotions that they have okay. and actually what we realize is the more we enable that the better the mental health of people okay and actually you know a lot of great people like that even though you know older my old age yeah. my gray hairs you know it's you come back to it, you oh, you want to want to create something you want to make something yeah it's actually i think on a pedagogic level it's your brain saying there's something going on and you want to try and communicate it yeah you want to play as well yeah. play is a big part of this process and um but you know we don't use that in just film it's theater productions we do festivals we do events we do Films of all different shapes and sizes. We just finished a feature-length film a couple of months ago. Oh, fascinating. Um, and it just varies in the type of work you want to do. And, that and, and, yeah. and, and an, an approach and a practice we use is called co-production. What that means is, in the traditional sense of a film production, you have a director okay. and a producer, and, yeah. a, and you go down the ranks. Uh, co-production suggests, actually, you all make together based upon what you input in. Okay. So you make together. And the belief... And it's and it works is if you can make together you can live together so if you encourage young people to make with other young people their relational wealth goes up their mental health gets better they are more able to their emotional intelligence gets better they're able to communicate their feelings better they're uh they build long-term lifelong friends etc 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 so it, creativity is just like the the petrol yeah to having a more i think uh, a healthier life and having um, yeah more meaningful expressive life I think that's fascinating I, I, like, I entirely agree to you uh, agree with you sorry agree to you that's weird um, but <laughs> from 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 my own experience and yeah. like um, where where I've gone through when it comes to my like career and everything like that you know I've gone through workspaces and places which have been great great experience you know I've done a lot doing that but Going back to what you said, when I actually created for my sake, you know, for, you know, doing these videos and um, I know we're still creating it for Camera Center and, you know, the podcast and all of that, but having the, the ability to be creatively expressive through that, I think, um, has helped my mental health amazingly. I don't think there's been a time where I've actually been this happy mm. in general. Um, and that is a big part to just creating, having fun with what you do and, uh, you know... Um, from what you do, it sounds completely fascinating. Um, and there's actually another link with this is weird, I'm going to bring into it. My mother, <laughs> she does sound tray therapy. Sound, uh, sound tray therapy. Sound so she's a doctor, counsel, uh, counselor, and psychotherapist, right? Um, but 
doing some work with her previously because you know I'm the creative in the family and whenever you're the creative in the family you get cottoned into doing everything right <laughs> so I did some work with her but what was fascinating from that and an entirely different kind of medium to what I do right and what we do essentially um, is the link between mental health and being able to tell a story in a creative fashion and um, through that we had ended up talking in a similar line to what you were talking about where it's just like um, using filmmaking as a way to do creative expression. I don't know if we're going down a rabbit hole here. No, you're yeah. going down the right rabbit hole. You're going the down the right, right rabbit hole. What we've learned is... How deep do you want to go down the rabbit hole? I love a deep rabbit uh, hole. Okay, okay. So the stories we tell ourselves are more important than the stories we tell each other. Are you a survivor of a situation? Have you come through the other end of a situation? Are you a hero of your story? Are you a villain of your story? Uh, these things help us frame the type of life we live. Uh, and actually, creativity plays a big part of that role. And I think our society is structured in a way that actually we, we beat the living life out of, that of people as they get older. <laughs> Therefore, their mental health gets kind of yeah. compounded. If they've, if they've gone into the adulthood with maybe um, with issues, unresolved issues, what happens is they compound later on. Yeah. And actually what we need to do is set those stories free. Yeah. You don't have to do it publicly, but you have to get them out. Yeah. Um, yeah. We can go deeper down that rabbit hole, but no, it's, no, a, no, it's no. a really important part it's, of human development. It's, it's yeah, story, really, storytelling, it's storytelling, from my perspective, is what we have created as a, as a species homo sapiens as a means of demystifying the complexities of the world we live in a world that get that yeah. is getting more complex therefore it's more important to tell stories yeah otherwise it's going to become overbearing Other, I, that's why anxiety is at such yeah. a high level because we don't know we're unaware we're, we're concerned we're scared etc cetera, etc cetera. i was doing some uh, doc work a little while back on buskers on the street buskers, and yeah. um there was somebody that did uh paint work or bus you know uh, that sort of like bowl spray paint kind of stuff right right okay yeah, yeah. there's yeah. a link don't worry there's a link yeah. um he said something quite um real i thought doing that and that was uh, if the arts were gone, then there would be tanks rolling on the streets. You know, it's the idea that um, arts, I, in in general, and music, filmmaking, drawing, and all this is a, a way for us to take away from the idea of like science is king or you know logic, yeah. logic dictate. You know, it's art helps of like. It helps us to evolve socially, I think, rather than you know technologically speaking or yeah. like. Yeah, we're, yeah. We're, we're we're we are. There was the la the largest study on longevity of life was done by Stanford University. It's forty forty seven years, forty six forty seven yeah. years. I can't remember. Um, the the most prominent aspect to the, the largest contributor to longevity of life was actually your re your relational wealth. Yeah. It was actually the quality of relationship you have. It wasn't the gym you went to. It wasn't the food you had. It was the relationships you have. And actually, uh, storytelling is a part of the process. Yeah. Uh, actually, it's um, making together, connecting together, yeah. having more meaningful relationships with people, trusting yeah. your community, trusting people. Yeah. Art is a big part of that process. Yeah. Um, so the transformational power of art is is tried and tested societies that have access to more creativity are healthier yeah you know more militarized communities are not as healthy <laughs> surprisingly just, you know it's just the, it's, the suppression doesn't do very very good in those kind yeah, of it's a regimentation of life and I've, i always feel like art is the is the liberation of the human spirit when yeah. you, when the human spirit is let free and, and encouraged to be free it will naturally make art mm. it will naturally be creative yeah and I think one of the interesting points to make on that th when we're talking about kind of like a suppressed kind of like area, mm. I think we're every in, now and then, like we're, we're going, going deep. deep. <laughs> every now and then, what's really fascinating and when it comes to suppressed areas mm. is that there's like a there's like a silver lining, there's like a gold thread of just somebody that's just become intensely creative through the fact they've been compressed in an environment that doesn't allow it. Mm, yeah. Do you get what I mean? Mm. 
pressure forms diamonds. But like, I'm not but, saying it doesn't happen. It happens more outside of that because yeah. it's allowed. But I think there are there are cases where pressure has formed something special. Pressure forms diamonds. That's what I would like. Well, I, I would say pressure forms the need to liberate the spirit more. Yes. Yeah. Uh, you know, the best music comes out of the poorest community. You made that connection. Yeah. You know, it's the best music always does because actually you got more to sing. You got yeah. you got a reason to sing your heart out. Yeah. Um. So yeah, pressure forms more of a need to survive, <laughs> <laughs> and that survival will happen by any means necessary. So yeah. actually, um, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense. Oh. That was deep, man. Oh yeah. <laughs> I just really said, like, how I, far do you want to go down the ramp? I, I, I feel like I, I can change. I, I, I love a, I'm a, well, it. I'm a deep kind of conversation. It's interesting because I wouldn't say that like a rabbit hole is necessarily something that you've gone down with other creatives. Mm. Like, uh, in, in, in the music world, I would say that yeah. there's definitely a sight more when you're yeah. making yeah, I love I love a good rabbit hole. I'm yeah. I'm a big fan of the rabbit yeah, hole. I wasn't saying that's a bad thing. Yeah. Saying that they could, they no. It's, 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 you, you put a box to one side and like think Yeah. 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 Uh, love to put yeah. a box to one side and then think outside of it. That's one of my favorite things to do. <laughs> I liked. Yeah. I find sometimes though, there's, you know. Creativity. Oh, I don't know how to explain that. That's a complex process. Ask me a question. I, I can go down. That's a massive. <laughs> that's, that's not a rabbit hole. That's a dragon hole. That's a dragon <laughs> hole. I love a good dragon <laughs> hole. I was thinking about actually. Sometimes, creativity can be lost in uh, a need to perform. Yeah. You know, need to perform your creativity. I think creativity really. And, and when we say creativity, we suggest it's painting, making, photographing, film. Creativity actually is growing your first plant, painting your first garden fence, creating children, cre creating anything, yeah. making something is important. That, yeah. Let's just get very clear. I think that's, that's what we really need to do yeah. is to make something, apply your wisdom, your labor, your hands and brain connect and make something. Yeah. Make something that you've made. And I think all human beings need to do that. And I think art just enables that process. We live in a time of when it comes to everything, just you can get anything at any time, whenever you want it, right? Mm. Um, and I think when you look back into the like older times where it's like, you know, car, you were a carpenter, that's what you did for your life. That, you, know, yeah, yeah. you know, trade was creating, mm. was a big part of their everyday life. And through that, I think... Yes, you probably had some social, and uh, what's it called, some uh, mental uh, difficulties here and there. Mm. But in general, I think people lived a more fulfilling existence than uh, this constant chase, chase to become the, the next biggest Mr. Beast. Or I think that, that's what I was concerned with, because I think that leads to... Uh unmanaged expectations and it also leads to the need to appease people yeah and that gets tough and i think a lot of creative people do get stuck on that yeah you know and i think you, you should lead by your your circle of truth stand yeah. on it and yeah yeah and then the need to say what you need to say comes out naturally yeah. Come, and i think that's the best way to do it yeah uh so there's also a need to make money i get that and i, yeah. I respect that fully um bye bye um, um I, if i'm honest like i'd be happy not making any don't terry's gone right <laughs> uh i'd be happy not <laughs> i'd be happy not earning a dime off of doing this because yeah. i enjoy it yeah. you gotta earn money somewhere sometimes yeah. and you gotta understand I'll that tell you something about money let's talk about money let's okay. get, out of the, get out of the rabbit hole uh, what i've learned recently is eye opening profoundly we assume that now, the, what the stat was, one in eight people are salespeople. Yeah. As a, as work. But the debate and argument is that actually, that's probably like seven and eight people are salespeople. The only difference is we're selling something else. Yeah. You, know, you might not be selling a product, but you're selling your vision. Yeah. You're selling your need to make something, want to create something. You're selling your business. You're selling your trade. You're selling yeah. your wisdom. You're selling your skills. You're selling your experience. It goes on. Yeah. Actually, everybody sells something. Well, I mean, like... 
every <laughs> this is going to sound There's like a blank thing, but like I did hear somewhere that every job is basically selling. No, no, that's a crime. Every job's a crime. <laughs> No, it's just like every 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 crime you're stealing. Every like, crime you're stealing. You're stealing an aspect or something. That's another rabbit hole. Okay. That's I don't even remember where I heard that, but like, it, yeah, just skip over that. That's the whole. The reason I brought that up really was I was just trying yeah. to suggest that when we make and create money comes anyway it comes yeah. eventually yeah eventually and if you get smarter and wiser and more strategic it will just come a bit faster yeah and, uh, and so i don't think we should obsess over making money yeah. because it can lead to unhealthy relationships to money yeah and then you then lack the ability just to forget you know forget why you're doing it why you know why are you there yeah why are you there why are you why are you spending your time doing that making that creating that yeah. um but that critical mass happens inevitably. From my experience, that happens inevitably. Yeah. Because actually you then, if you love it enough, you realize actually other people are really excited by this. Yeah. Other people are really inquisitive about this. Other people have asked me questions about this. Oh, can I turn this into something? Yeah. You explore that. Yeah. And as you explore that, you realize actually you've got something really unique. Mm. And that's when it's worth a lot of money. Etc. That happens naturally. So I think, yeah. Th that's an, another part of the work we do is yeah. we, we, we try and encourage young people to explore that but do it in safe ways yeah. don't just say well, not don't just say but it's not safe for us to say to young people hey go be a painter yeah you know you've got to pay bills everyone's got to pay bills right as as young people become older people or older people um we realize actually the endeavor of making art and creating art is ex is stooped in and exists in the real world yeah. You've got to pay your bills, pay your rent, yada, yada, yeah. yada, right? Um, get that sorted. Yeah. Sort that stuff out. Fetch water, make bread. Go do that. Yeah. Because that's going to keep you alive. Yeah. <laughs> and then explore. How do you live a creative life around that? How do you live a life of more, yeah. uh, where your spirit feels a bit free, you don't yeah. feel restricted and restrained? Does that make sense? Yeah. And liberate yourself through that process eventually. That's, and that's, 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 that's a safe way of doing it. Otherwise, mm. it's like, you know, dive into a uh, an industry that has very little safeguarding sometimes or yeah. dive into spaces where actually i mean that's it with this industry it's like yeah you're working obscene hours yeah. you know what i mean that's that's dangerous and it's destructive yeah um yeah you should do it mindfully do it do, the, do this, uh, this this experience of exploring your creativity to help you secure your life uh, requires you to be mindful of it mm. you don't dive in you know don't just jump off a the edge of the the springboard and hope for the best <laughs> just do it mindfully yeah can you can you look down there and just see if there's anything down there or can you actually make a little ladder to take yourself halfway yeah. down wherever wherever it may be these are metaphors but we encourage young people to do that oh, I love it has to be done it has to be done yeah. because i think otherwise we you because we're a youth work led or agency youth work is a big part of the work is safeguarding has to factor into this work yeah like we, 100%. You know, not just say hey hey be creative yeah but hey do you want to explore this? Do you, is there something you want to say? This is the yeah. advocacy work. Is there something you want to explore? Is there a topic that's of concern to you? Yeah. That is, you know, eating away at you or, you know, brings you deep anxieties. Can we turn that into an experience for you to understand more about it? Yeah. Can you extinguish your fears of that yeah. through the process of making art and creative yeah. work? So, yeah. It sounds really fascinating. Cool. It is. It's fun. It's not boring. Yeah. <laughs> definitely not boring. No, definitely not boring. Never <laughs> no, boring. No, Never no, boring. boring. No. Sorry, no, it was um, it's awesome. I like, really like it because Harry's told me kind of like what well, what you do, but it's nice to hear it from you and actually. Yeah, yeah. Cool. I mean, I, I've been doing it for years and, you know, I teach in universities yeah. um, and I do a lot of work with kind of education establishments and I do a lot of consulting work as well. But yeah, my, the, 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 the lion's share of my work is in that charity, to be honest. Yeah. nowadays yeah i'm just getting older i'm just like you know i just yeah, want to focus just... and do i want to do less of the chaotic stuff and just focus on the really good work yeah um the, the most meaningful and yeah and okay that's it it's work. finding the most <laughs> okay kind of, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah so that, that's important to me yeah fair enough you've always been very community led and uh, very driven by giving back to your Yeah, I think I, I, maybe that's from a young age. I'm not sure why. I'm not sure why people think that sometimes. Mm. I think it's really 
Yeah, but like, I mean, I've always been very entrepreneurial. Yeah. You know, I've set up multiple businesses. Some have flunked. Some have done great. You know what I mean? It's just the way it, I think. I think we, we need to redefine community work. Yeah. Because actually, a How good so? a good local business does good community work. Yeah, it's yeah. all it's all really I, about. I, the I've learned this through. I did a huge project, a multi million pound project in regeneration, and I realised actually businesses are cornerstones to their communities. Yeah, the business owner, the local business owner, will have will know all the local gossip. They yeah. know who's doing what, and actually, like indirectly, they're social workers. <laughs> they may not they might not even come knocking on your house, but actually, they'll know if you're doing well, or they'll know yeah. actually. You know how things are gone, and how you get to, you know or yeah. ask you about that stuff, and, and we realize actually this is all part of this broader idea of relational wealth. When you have good relational wealth, you have places to make more money. You have more people that want to buy from you. You have more people that trust you. You have more people that want to promote you. It's amazing, mm. It goes on. It has a yeah. it has a, a snowballing effect. Yeah. So when we say community work, I'm just saying actually just work work mindfully in the places you live. Yeah, I think it can only help people, and I don't. And then and when you look at it like that, it's not community work. You're just yeah. doing good work. You're just doing good work where you live. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that's a good way of looking at it. When you rather than community work, because I'm not a youth worker. I am no. actually trained youth work, but like <laughs> base level, base. Level. I am, but I'm not. I'm base level. You know, I'm, but I, I never introduced myself as a youth worker. I mean, yeah. I'm a filmmaker. I'm a creative. Yeah. Um, yeah. Nice. I trained as youth work because I had to be. And I was like, okay, cool. I had to be credited. Great. Go yeah, to the course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go yeah. to the course. Great. Uh, let's so what brought you training. down the idea to do this? Is it from like a young age why you did it? Or is it like something you've always wanted to do? Because you said that you've done a lot of businesses that have either been successful, maybe flunked here and yeah. there. Um, what got you to start doing this? Um, I think it was, I think it was a broader understanding of some philosophies really it was just really understanding or wanting to understand how to be happy and how to live a good life mm -hmm. i think i just explored that idea yeah and i think naturally i went down this route oh, and it nice. wasn't like a i'm gonna do this type of work yeah. it just naturally happened you know i had to okay. live a good life and I had to to be happy doing the work you do okay. uh, i guess i've been around from a young age, I saw a lot of people just miserable at the work. I'm like, why are you like, why are you doing that work if it makes you really miserable? Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean. I was like, I didn't want to go down that route. So let me, let me, let me enjoy my life uh, and do what I like doing and make, turn that into a scenario that I can uh, live off. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it became a natural process. It wasn't like it became a natural process. Premeditated. I didn't have a business plan that laid out. Yeah. Um, so then, process with that. Um, people watching this maybe you know starting out their career maybe students or something like that what advice would you give somebody that's looking to get into doing something creative or uh, something along what you do or you know because there, I think there's some interesting points that we've talked about here because you're talking about um, you know uh, your your own health when it comes to mm. getting into stuff because I think a lot of creators have been through uh, bad work relationships and then mm. good work relationships. So, like, what's is your advice for somebody starting out? Oof, starting out, yeah. so someone who's very early on. Okay, yeah, yeah, so yeah. if you want to make films, make films. Yeah. If you want to take photographs, take photographs. If you want to write poems, write poems. You have to. I think you have to lean on your experience and your training. Mm. You have to lean on that. That's yeah. your that's your like the the strong foot. Yeah. So start there. Don't do it because you think it'll look cool. Don't do it because someone said you should do it yeah. immediately. You know, take some advice with pinch of salt, I say. Um But yeah, lead develop a good foundation for that passion. Yeah. Um you know, I was lucky enough to be a graduate of the documentary photography program in uh, Newport. And um, we used to shoot rolls of film every day. Yeah. Several rolls of film every day. That was natural yeah. for us. So looking back at it today, that's not possible. <laughs> cause no, no, no. no, no. Film, but, um, I wish it was, though. That I mean, film's exciting. But beyond that, like it doesn't matter if it's film or if it's your yeah. phone. It doesn't really matter. The, my point is, if you enjoy that process, just 
do it more. Yeah. Actually, there's no there is no shortcut for being great at something you do. No. Than just to do it more of it and actually explore it, and yeah. find out and get feedback. Speak to people. You know, put it out to the world. See what happens. Put it out to friends. See what happens. Yeah. Put it out to n- people you've never met before in your life. But, but yeah, I think you need to do more of it. Yeah. Before you make complete broad stroke decisions on stuff. Yeah, I believe I it's a good place to start. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. I believe it's um. I forgot where I was going to go with that. Um, okay. That's fine. <laughs> That's fine. Um, Fez. Yeah. It's been absolutely lovely having you down Thank today. You um, some really know. fascinating things. Have you got any closing thoughts there at all? Closing uh, thoughts. Perhaps plug the uh, plug. Plug the plug. Plug the plug. Plug the plug. Uh, Big plug, we're working on a massive international festival next year, summer, July 26th, 27th, 28th, for 10,000 people. Uh, it's a massive collaboration between uh, Jamaica, uh, Wales, massive destination festival for Wales now. Um, international reggae artists from around the world are coming down. Awesome. Um, we're really exploring the idea of reciprocity, which means like if you give, you can take safely, and if you take, you should give safely. It's just, okay. it's, and Reggae music is one of those things we think there should be better reciprocity. Reggae musicians should have more access. Yeah. And the people that consume reggae music should understand its history and heritage and where it comes from. Okay. Um, so that's a big project next year, July. That sounds fascinating. Come on down. Yeah. Reggae. It's called Reggae and Rhythm Festival. Reggae uh, and it's Rhythm. a national trust site called Trigger House. Uh, yeah, find us on Facebook and all, all the jazz. Awesome. Twitter. Cool. Website, etc. Sick, man. 